Okay, so there's lots of hosepipe bands and water shortages, so I didn't really want to do with the Fold 4 what I did with the Fold 3, but you get the point. The Fold 4, as the Fold 3, does have IPX8 water resistance, which is great. What's up guys, Saf here on Super Saf TV. And as you may remember from my cliche YouTube title a couple of weeks ago, I did switch to the Samsung Galaxy Fold 4 as my primary device. And in this video, I'm gonna be covering my experience and also answering the question, am I gonna be keeping my SIM card in the Fold 4? This video is sponsored by O2 SwitchUp. Stay tuned to find out how you can change your current phone for a new one whenever you like, as many times as you'd like. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the build design and durability because I did actually drop this. Anyway, so it's very familiar because it looks and feels a lot like the Fold 3. Yes, it's a little bit lighter, a little bit shorter, a little bit thinner, but generally speaking, it is very, very familiar. Now we do have a couple more colors compared to last year. So although we have the Phantom Black, there is a new beige, as well as this gray green, which um, kind of looks blue in a lot of angles, to be fair. That's the one I've gone with. I still do like the look of it. There's also a burgundy version available exclusively from samsung.com. And if you are thinking of getting this from Samsung, then you can get up to $200 of credit using my affiliate link down in the description. Just thought I'd mention that. Right, now a couple of key changes we've got in the design. The frame is now glossy compared to more of the matte finish that we had on the Fold 3. Now personally, I do prefer more of a matte finish and I'll tell you a little bit more about why. So I was in a restaurant on the first day when I put my SIM card into the Fold 4. The Fold 4 is a thicker device compared to normal devices and it's also heavier. So what happened is it actually slipped outside and the Fold 3 also slipped out of my lap right now. A few moments later. It's okay, it fell on carpet, so it's not so bad. The Fold 4 wasn't as lucky however because when this slipped out of my pocket, it straight went on to hard tile and I was just like, oh man, it's broken. Had a look at it and you know what? Honestly speaking, it was fine overall. There is a small chip on the frame. Now, if we had a matte frame like we have on the Fold 3, then that chip wouldn't have been as noticeable, but it's not too noticeable either way. And it's nice to know that this did survive quite a hard drop. Right, now let's talk about the displays. Now, if you remember from my Fold 3 review, one of my biggest complaints was that the cover screen was just not wide enough. The Fold 4 does have a wider cover display, although the device isn't wider, and that's because we have smaller overall bezels. You'll notice that this big chunk on the left-hand side of the Fold 3 has been significantly reduced on the Fold 4, and that gives you roughly around just under three millimeters of extra width. Practically, what difference does that slight width increase give you? Well, it does actually make a difference, especially when typing, just having those keys a little bit larger does make a difference, but it's not significant enough. I would have preferred something that was a little bit wider. Now, sure, a lot of people will probably be using swipe to type on the keyboard when they're using the cover display, but uh, this is still a bit too narrow for my liking. So that's the cover screen. Let's now talk about this main beautiful folding display. So as we had in the Fold 3, we do have consistency. So both displays do have up to 120 Hertz. Everything is super smooth and it's just a really, really nice display. We have smaller bezels. So you've got around three millimeters more width compared to the Fold 3, like we've got on the cover display. And the under display camera is not as visible as it was on the Fold 3. Now on the Fold 3, I did find it quite distracting. But on the Fold 4, I gotta say, they have done really well in hiding it. I don't notice it near as much as I did on the Fold 3. Now the quality of it hasn't really changed. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But one of the things I do wanna talk about, which people keep talking about in the comments, is the crease. Would I have liked the crease to be less prominent? Yes. Am I too bothered that it's not really changed? No. When you're using a foldable device like this, your thumbs are usually on the side, so you're not really feeling that crease as much. And also, when you are watching this head on, the crease isn't that visible. It's mostly visible from different angles. So yes, somebody else looking over your shoulder is gonna notice that crease, but you probably won't notice it that much. So it's not that much of a big deal for me. 
Now, one of the areas where the crease is a little bit annoying is when you're using the S Pen. And I wanna talk a little bit about the S Pen. The Fold 4, like the Fold 3 did, does have support for the S Pen. Now, you do have to get a specific S Pen because the tip has to be retractable, so you can get the Fold Edition, which now comes color-coordinated with the different colors of the devices and you can get the S Pen Pro. Right, now before I talk about the S Pen and be somewhat critical towards it, I want you to keep in mind that this is a bonus feature. It's not something that you have to get. And it is still really impressive that Samsung engineers have managed to get digitizers and things into this foldable screen so that we can use an S Pen. Now having said that, we talked about the crease. This is not much of a big deal when you're using it day to day, but when you're using the S Pen, if you do go across the middle, you will notice it a lot more. Now, if you're using it just to like sign the occasional document or something, then that's fine. But for me, if you do have this big canvas, then you might want to doodle or do some artwork. And the crease does kind of dip in. The best way I can describe this is if you are trying to draw on a two page booklet and the dip in between that, if you try to draw across that, it's just not gonna be the best experience. And that's similar to what we have here on the Fold 4. The other thing to keep in mind is that the S Pen only works on the foldable display. It doesn't work on the cover display. So if you wanna make a quick note, just pull it out of your pocket and just scribble something, you're not gonna be able to do that like you can do on say the S22 Ultra. And finally, there is nowhere on the Fold to enclose the S Pen. So you're gonna to have to have this separate. Now you can get some cases that enclose the S Pen, but they make the Fold 4, which is already quite a thick device, even thicker. So for me, realistically speaking, over the past couple of weeks, I've simply not used the S Pen because it's never with me. Now my solution to this would be make the device slightly wider, have a wider cover screen, and have space for an enclosed S Pen. That would make it so much more practical and usable here on the Fold 4. Once again, I wanna emphasize, you don't have to get the S Pen, but if you are thinking of getting the Fold 4 with the S Pen, then just do keep those points in mind. Right now, before we continue, a quick thanks to our sponsor for this video, O2 Switcher. So doing what I do, I get to switch up my smartphone pretty often, and it's great to be able to try out all of the different offerings out there. And you can do the same with O2 Switch Up. O2 has launched SwitchUp to give customers the freedom to change their current phone for a new one whenever they'd like, as many times as they'd like. SwitchUp is available on Plus plans automatically, free of charge, and can be added to a custom plan for just $3.99 a month. And as an O2 SwitchUp customer, you can switch to a new phone whenever you like by simply going into an O2 store and trading in your current device. And with no limits on how long customers need to have had their current phone or how long is left on their current contract, switching is easier than ever. If you wanna find out more about O2 SwitchUp and how you can sign up, check out the link in the description below. I wanna now move on to the cameras. We talked about the four megapixel under display camera briefly. It's less visible, but the quality is still the same. It's not great. It's four megapixels, it's behind a barrier. So there is processing involved to give you somewhat of a decent image. But the intention for this is mainly when you're doing video calls and things. And for video calls, it's okay. And I am a little bit forgiving about this four megapixel camera because we do have a decent enough front facing camera here on the cover screen. Now this is a punch out and it's not been improved massively. However, again, I'm a little bit more forgiving about this and that's because you can use the rear facing cameras on the Fold 4 as front facing cameras and use the cover display as a preview. Now this means that you're gonna get better selfies than you're gonna get on pretty much most devices out there. It also means that you can get ultra wide selfies which you wouldn't be able to do on many others. And let's talk about these cameras. So if you remember from my Fold 3 review, one of the things I mentioned was that although the cameras were good, they weren't really up there in competition with some of the other flagships. The good news is that the cameras have been improved quite a bit and they are the same cameras as we have on the S22 and the S22 Plus, which are excellent cameras, flagship cameras, and the photos and videos on the Fold 4 are really good and an improvement compared to the Fold 3. Now, 
in daytime shots, you might not notice a big difference, but you can definitely notice a difference in low light shots because of the new sensor. And also with zoom, before we had two times zoom, which really wasn't that useful, we now have three times zoom up to 30 times digital zoom. Sure, this is not on the level of the S22 Ultra, which has periscope zoom technology as well as a larger primary sensor, but I no longer feel like I'm having to compromise on the cameras to have this foldable experience. I still have very, very good flagship cameras, and this is something that I'm very happy with. Right, I wanna talk a little bit about the performance on the software experience. So, we have the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chipset. Now, this is the latest and greatest. It's actually more powerful compared to the S22 Ultra that we had earlier this year. And we've also got 12 gigabytes of RAM. In terms of performance, this has been absolutely great. You can very quickly and easily switch between apps and it's completely seamless. And that's also thanks to this taskbar, which I really like. Having all those shortcuts here at the bottom means that you can utilize this large display and go between apps very quickly. And I've not had any real hiccups or anything when it comes to performance on this device. I'm personally not a gamer. My friend Thunder E from Board at Work is. He's actually done a gaming test here on the Fold 4. I'll leave that video linked down in the description if you're interested. Samsung has really tried to optimize apps as much as possible to utilize this larger display. It's still not quite there. There are still some apps which don't transfer over from the cover display to the main display and you'll get a little message that they will restart. Now things will of course improve with time as more and more apps get optimized and the apps that are optimized are really good. Outlook is the app that I use for emails. And one thing that I liked on the Fold 3 that we also have here on the Fold 4 is just being able to have all of your emails displayed like you would do on desktop. I'm somebody who does not like replying to emails on my smartphone. However, on the Fold 4, you kind of do get a bit of that desktop experience, which is much, much more convenient. And if you are a business user and you're somebody that's gonna be using this for lots of Word documents and emails and things like that. This is gonna give you an experience that you're just not gonna get on any other smartphone. Now let's talk about the multi-window experience. I mentioned that this is the best multitasking smartphone you can get, I still agree with that, but having used this for the past couple of weeks, I've really not used any more than two windows. So you can easily just drag and drop icons and set up this three window experience. You can also have a floating window on top of all of this if you'd like. And I actually asked this question on Twitter saying, what are the practical uses of something like this apart from showing off? And realistically speaking, I didn't get anybody that gave me some practical uses where you could use three windows like this on this size display. Yes, it's a larger display than most of the smartphones, but it's not at the size of a tablet. If I've got Twitter open in this small window, there's not really much I can see on here. So yes, just because you can do it, I don't really see a reason for doing it. Some people said showing off is actually a practical reason. Fair enough. Now, having said that, once again, I wanna emphasize when you do have two windows open at the same time, this is still gonna be an experience that you're not gonna get on a regular smartphone. It's just nice to have all of that screen and being able to use that, say for example, if I'm browsing the web as well as Twitter at the same time, if I'm watching a video uh, going on social media, or if I'm looking for some holidays and using the calculator app to just quickly make some calculations. There's also flex mode, which I didn't really find myself using too much. The one used for flex mode is for photos. I think this is great just to be able to place this on a table and then go in front, get a group photo or something like that. That's really, really good. But uh, when it comes to, I don't know, like just typing a message out like this, I don't really find myself doing that. Some people kind of want to use this as a bit of a keyboard, like a mini sort of a laptop. I mean, it's cool, but it's not something that I found myself using too much. Now, I guess one practical use for flex mode is if you're watching videos, maybe if you're on the train or on a plane, and you kind of want to use this without a kickstand, shall we say, you can have a video playing hands-free and have that there on your tray table or whatever. So that is, again, a practical feature. And my point is that lots of these features are here and you might not use every single one of them, but for certain use cases, having a foldable device like this really gives you an experience that you're not gonna get anywhere else. Right now, before we move on to the battery, just touching on a few of the points. 
The speakers on here are great, stereo speakers, top and bottom. So if you are watching videos, they're gonna sound really good. We've got Dolby Atmos, and we have the fingerprint scanner in the same place here on the right. It wouldn't really make sense to have a fingerprint scanner in the display on a device like this with two screens. Now the fingerprint scanner for your thumb is fine, but if you are gonna be kind of reaching over with your finger, I did initially find that it wasn't as accurate. My advice for you to get over that would be to register the same fingerprint a couple of times, and that just makes it that much more accurate. Right, now let's talk about charging and battery life. So charging is still 25 watts, and you can go from zero to 50% in around 30 minutes. Not as fast as lots of the other competition, but still pretty good. And wireless charging speeds have also been improved. So we've got 15 watts versus 10 watts. So it does charge a little bit faster when you are on a compatible wireless charger. But what about battery life? I know this is something that a lot of people are interested in. Now, battery life, of course, can vary, especially on a device like this, because you have two displays, right? So if you're using just the cover display a lot, maybe 80% of the time, and just using the folding display around 20% of the time, you're of course gonna be getting more battery life compared to somebody like me who does use the larger folding display a lot more. But what has my battery life experience been like? Well, the battery size is the same as the Fold 3, and I was optimistic that the battery life would be better thanks to the new chipset. But in my personal experience, the battery life has been quite similar, just maybe slightly better compared to the Fold 3. So for me, I'm getting around four to five hours of screen on time, which in my opinion is good, but it's not great. It's not on the level of something like the S22 Ultra, which I would be using for a longer period of time. Now, I guess this is understandable. You have a smaller battery, 4,400 milliamps, compared to something like the S22 Ultra. And also you're gonna be using the much bigger display, which is gonna demand a lot more battery life. So in terms of my day-to-day, -day, generally speaking, it was fine. There was one day where I was using it quite heavily and I did run out of juice around 8 p.m. at night. Again, I wanna emphasize that usage is gonna vary from person to person, depending on how you're gonna use this. But if you were to ask me, I would say that the Fold 4 has good battery life not great, and that's the same thing that I said for the Fold 3. Finally, let's conclude the Fold 4. Pricing-wise, it's coming in roughly about the same in the US compared to what the Fold 3 came in at, and in the UK, it's around 50 pounds more, and you can get up to one terabyte. Who is this for, and am I going to be keeping my SIM card here in the Fold 4? Well, if you're after the best foldable that you can buy in Western markets, then this is still your only option. There's a lot of competition coming from the likes of Xiaomi and others, but those are not readily available in the West, which kind of gives Samsung a bit of a monopoly on foldables. I did hear in Mr. Mobile's video that around 88% of foldables are Samsung's out in the market. And it's arguable that Samsung has become a bit more chilled and is only giving incremental updates like we can see here. Having said that, this is still an excellent foldable smartphone, especially because of the optimizations and the experience. And if you are in the market for a foldable, then I think this is gonna be the option for you. And especially because of some of the deals that you can currently get on the Fold 4 right now, you've got some crazy trading deals as well as some additional accessories that Samsung's throwing in. You can get the 512 gigabyte version for 256 gigabytes, and you can also get that additional $200 credit if you use my affiliate link down in the description below. Will I be keeping my SIM card in the Fold 4? I guess I will be keeping it in for a little while longer. I may switch to the Flip just to review that. However, in the long term, I think I might be going back to my S22 Ultra. I do miss the additional battery life and I do miss having the S Pen readily available enclosed in the device. That's what I think anyway. What do you guys think of the Fold 4? Will you be getting one? Do drop me a comment below. Let me know your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then do smash that like button for me. And if you haven't already and you want to see more content like this, then be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss future coverage. Thanks for watching. This is Saf on SuperSaf TV. I'll see you next time.